$400 as tip? Either he hadn't noticed how much he'd given me, or he was totally insane. The two men stared at him incredulously, and my jaw was probably on the floor too. It's for you. Don't be so surprised, he added. Are you sure? Of course, he said. A few seconds later, I gained my composure and I knew that my face had lit up by then. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate it. I was desperate, all right. I had bills to pay, my father's debts to clear, and a whole bag filled with responsibilities. It didn't help that my salary wasn't much. The tips helped me a lot. I pushed the money in my pocket and went as far as to see the customers out of the door as a polite gesture for their generosity. After the coffee-drinking customer had paid and walked out, Diego and I were left to close the restaurant. He stayed at the cash counter to settle the bills while I took the trash out of the back door. The storm had come to a halt. I placed some leftover fish and water for the stray cat that I'd been feeding for over the past few months and started to make my way back inside the restaurant when a strong hand reached for the doorknob first and slammed the door shut. I looked up to see who it was. The darkness made it quite difficult, but a flash of lightning allowed me to see that it was the same man as before. The man who generously tipped me. I fidgeted. Do you need anything? He straightened his blazer jacket and turned to look at his watch and smiled at me. I can give you an extra two hundred, he suggested, smiling coyly. What do you say? I don't understand. He sighed, took my hand in his, and placed it on the crotch of his pants, rubbing it slightly and groaned. I have my car parked just around the parking lot. We'll make it quick. I snatched my hand out of his grasp, feeling disgusted. I'm not a whore! Oh, come on. I saw how you were smiling at me, he said as if that explained anything. I smile at all my customers. It doesn't mean anything. My voice was shaky by now. Just a quick buck. You can do some exceptions for extra tips, right? I reached for my pocket and thrust the hundred dollar bills in his face. Here! I don't need your money! Now move out of my way! I should have known he was one of those creepy men who lured women by showing them the power of money. I shouldn't even have accepted such a hefty tip. Stupid. Stupid, stupid. He let go of the door handle, so I opened the door and started walking in when he grabbed me out of nowhere, slammed the door, and locked it behind him. Next, he grabbed me and pushed me against the wall, ripping the top button off the dress. I struggled, screaming for someone to help me when he covered my mouth with his palm. I heard my own muffled cries over the sound of thunder. I tried to knee his groin, and I may have scratched his neck because it was now bleeding. I smacked him, and he smacked me hard in return, and I heard him call me a stupid bitch. I was resisting so hard, but I felt like I was going to lose the fight. I had this gut feeling that something bad was going to happen. I realized this was the end, an ugly one where I would probably end up sexually assaulted and dead somewhere near the dumpster. They said you should never beg for mercy at the person causing an assault, because begging usually fed their fantasy and made their experience even more fun. But I wasn't even in the state to think of all that. I continued to repeat the words, Please! My dress was tattered and dirty from struggling on the ground. He had my wrists pinned down. His knee was nudging between my thighs as his hand made its way towards my panties when suddenly he stopped. I was brawling, trying to pull myself to a sitting position, covering myself, and I dared to look towards him to see what had stopped the assault. A man was standing in the alley. I couldn't see his face properly, but at that moment, I knew he was my knight in shining armor. <laughs>